being born with the initial goal of replacing NASA's retired space shuttle, SpaceX's Dragon has far exceeded what was expected. So far, it is considered the most reliable and safe space vehicle ever to serve NASA. However, it does not mean it's perfect 100%. In fact, Dragon still has a certain downside compared to the shuttle. In that context, a startup in Colorado has produced a space plane called Dream Chaser to rival SpaceX's Dragon. This new vehicle is described as inheriting and promoting the great advantage of NASA's space shuttle. More notably, this craft is getting closer to its maiden launch. Perhaps the day Dragon confronts his opponent is not far away. In this video, we will update the latest news about Dream Chaser and analyze can this new face surpass SpaceX's powerful spacecraft in the future. Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. On November 2, 2023, Sierra Space, a Colorado commercial space company, made a stir in the space community by releasing the first Dream Chaser prototype called Tenacity. Why is it so caught in the public eye? This is a prototype spacecraft used to carry cargo to the ISS, and more importantly, as I said, it inherits and promotes great values from NASA's legendary space shuttle. That means from then on, SpaceX Dragon will have a formidable opponent. Sierra Space ended the year 2023 by announcing a major milestone in the development of its first commercial space station, as the first Dream Chaser spacecraft and Shooting Star cargo module were delivered from the Sierra Space Facility in Louisville, Colorado to NASA's Neil Armstrong Test Facility in Sandusky, Ohio on December 15 of the same year. At that test facility, Dream Chaser and Sierra Space's Shooting Star cargo module will be stacked in launch configuration and then exposed to extreme launch vibrations in the Mechanical Vibration Facility, which features the world's most powerful shaker table. When ready, it will launch on a United Launch Alliance Vulcan Centaur rocket. It will lift off from Cape Canaveral and return to Space Florida's launch and landing facility runway at the Kennedy Space Center. For those who live under the rock, the missions of Tenacity in particular and Dream Chaser in general are a part of the Commercial Resupply Services 2 or CRS-2 contract that NASA awarded Sierra Space in January 2016. According to this contract, Sierra Space will have to provide at least seven uncrewed flights to and from the ISS. Tenacity starts out with its mission called SNC Demo-1 to transport cargo to the ISS. In this flight, Tenacity will be combined with the Shooting Star module to provide an additional 4.5-ton payload capacity beside its payload. After transporting cargo to the ISS, the module will separate from the spaceship, then it will spontaneously burn up in the atmosphere. Meanwhile, Tenacity will re-entry back into the atmosphere thanks to its reusable design. After passing through the atmosphere, it will gently runway land like the Space Shuttle did. The landing site will be the runway formerly used by the Space Shuttle at Kennedy Space Center, Florida. While the previous target suggested the flight could take place as soon as April 2024, now Sierra Space did not offer a target date for the launch of Tenacity beyond stating it would take place in 2024. This might be because UL of Vulcan Centaur's first launch namely certification one slipped to January 2024 instead of Christmas this year as the initial plan. As you know, Tenacity's first flight will be the second flight of ULA's Vulcan Centaur, thus in order to Tenacity lift off. Certification one needs to fly in advance. Obviously, neither Sierra nor ULA knows whether Vulcan's upcoming launch will continue to be delayed or not, so setting a fixed target now would be quite a risk. In early December 2023, ULA performed a wet dress rehearsal of the company's new Vulcan Centaur rocket over the weekend, which included loading propellant into the spacecraft and running through launch day procedures up to the moments before engine ignition. That test, however, didn't go to plan. According to ULA CEO Tony Bruno, wet dress rehearsal experienced unspecified ground system issues, the CEO described as routine, but an additional test would likely push the Christmas Eve launch window out of consideration and the next window opens January 8, 2024, and will last four days. Fast forward to December 21 last year with the hashtag countdown to Vulcan on ULA's X, 
we can see that the Certification 1 payload complement for the inaugural ULA Vulcan rocket was atop the launch vehicle to form a full-stack rocket. ULA also added on its website that integrated testing and a complete electrical checkout of the combined rocket and payload would be completed in the coming days while final readiness reviews and closeout activities were performed in preparation for the rollout of the rocket on its Vulcan launch platform to SLC-41 for the countdown and liftoff. It can be said that Certification 1 plays an important role in the Dream Chaser team's plans. We're watching the Vulcan very carefully, Tom Weiss, CEO of Sierra Space acknowledged. They've got to get up their first flight of Vulcan, turn the mission data analysis around, and then we're on the second flight. After Tenacity, the next Dream Chaser prototypes will be built, especially the DC-200 prototype with the ability to carry both cargo and a crew of up to seven astronauts to the ISS. Once Dream Chaser becomes operational, this will clearly bring huge benefits to NASA. The space agency always aims for diversity in its options instead of depending on a single supplier like SpaceX Dragon especially in the context of Boeing's CST-100 Starliner is showing its lack of reliability when it is continuously delayed for long periods of time. Perhaps, Dream Chaser will be a perfect alternative for Boeing's spacecraft in the future if the CST-100 situation is not better. So the question here is whether Sierra Space's new spacecraft can gain a large share over its big brother SpaceX's Dragon in important NASA projects in the future. Since the Space Shuttle Atlantis stopped on its final mission in 2011, NASA had to rely on Russian Soyuz to carry astronauts to ISS. However, the success of SpaceX's first Crew Dragon mission in May 2020 has changed everything. This helps NASA regain independence in spaceflight after nearly a decade. Although the Dragon spacecraft is highly estimated by its state-of-the-art technology and low cost, it has a downside compared to NASA's Space Shuttle. While the shuttle eased itself down to the tarmac like an airplane, Dragon ended up splashing down in the ocean under parachutes just like the Apollo and Gemini capsules before it. This meant returning to Earth on a Dragon was a much rougher ride than what the shuttle offered. While not a problem for many payloads, it could be a ruinous experience for sensitive experiments such as those designed to study crystal growth and microgravity. In addition, Having to pull the spacecraft from the ocean and transporting the human crew members or scientific payloads back to land via helicopter will always take longer than simply landing the vehicle at a designated facility. On the other hand, Sierra Nevada Corporation is always proud of its Dream Chaser space plane because it can land on the runway the same way the shuttle did. More notably, with a quarter the size of the Space Shuttle Orbiter, the Dream Chaser has the advantage of being able to use any runway long enough to accommodate a large passenger plane. Its launch site, landing site, vehicle configuration, mission duration, and other characteristics can be adjusted to meet the needs of diverse users. Because it does not use highly toxic fuel or require specialized infrastructure, it can land on aircraft runways pretty much anywhere. This flexibility offers numerous advantages, for example, by getting payloads and astronauts returning from space to their final destinations quickly and safely. So does that mean Dream Chaser will be better than Dragon? Not really. Keep in mind that so far, Dragon still remains the only spacecraft in the world capable of routinely returning a significant amount of cargo to Earth. The Tenacity spacecraft hasn't even flown yet, so it's too early to comment anything about its reliability and safety compared to SpaceX's Dragon. Anyway, it is great to see healthy competition in the United States space industry. SpaceX needs stimulation from competitors to further improve itself and Elon Musk knows everyone is seeking to bypass his company, which is a major goal of all companies, to succeed like SpaceX, the model to imitate and try to surpass. Will not be easy, but a constant struggle for improvement will make America stronger. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content, Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.